to Chapter 12, Mechanical Engineering. We, um, we can start off by talking about the different constraints. Another term for constraints are forces. And these have been mentioned already in the past couple of years, so you already know a lot of these. Uh, just a reminder that the arrows for forces are always thicker arrows, as opposed to movement arrows that are thinner. Um, so uh, compression, such as crushing a can, we have tension, such as pulling um, on a rope, and then we have torsion, which is a movement of rotation but opposite directions, and we have deflection, where you have uh, on two ends, you have two different forces going opposite to the middle. We often see that also in a bookshelf. And finally, shearing, where it involves cutting or tearing something apart. The examples for bridges, um, when we look at the abutments on both sides of a bridge, the abutments uh, will cause a tension. And not just abutments, but also the ropes on bridges, they will cause a tension pulling apart on the bridge. And then you have the force of compression in the middle, where cars will pass, um, causing an opposite force against the tension, which, uh, which is why a bridge has to be well thought out. The forces um, of tension have to be way stronger than the forces of compression. Otherwise, the bridge would break. Now, if we look at mechanical properties of a material, they will describe how it reacts when subject, subjected to one or more constraint forces. So whatever material we decide to use for specific objects, uh, we will look at specifically these mechan mechanical properties. So for instance, here, if we discuss an object such as, um, I don't know, a stapler. Well, the stapler is made of metal or plastic. And we can look at, well, is the metal hard? And hardness means the ability to resist indentation or abrasion. Elasticity is the ability to return to the original shape after undergoing constraint. So for example, for the stapler, uh, I will use metal because it's not elastic. I don't want it to change shapes. Resilient is the ability to resist shocks without breaking. Say you drop the stapler, you don't want it to break. Uh, ductility, ability to be stretched without breaking. Malleability, ability to be flattened or bent without breaking. And stiffness, ability to retain the shape. So once we have put the, um, created the metal frame for, uh, let's say, glasses or the stapler, uh, we don't want it to change shape. So these are the main mechanical properties that we ask you to describe uh, an object with. Other properties include resistance to corrosion such as rusting. Um, so um, we use materials such as plastic, let's say, that will help um, uh, to prevent corrosion. Or if there is going to be corrosion, uh, then we'd need to put some kind of a liquid to protect from uh, the corrosion. Electrical conductivity, the ability to carry an electric current, and thermal is the same thing except ability to transmit heat. So let's look at wood. Why is wood useful? First of all, we look at there's different types of woods. You have hardwood that comes from deciduous trees, softwood that comes from coniferous trees, and modified wood is treated wood or material made with wood mixed with other substances. So we use wood because it easily worked. We can easily cut it, break it, etc. Uh, you can easily assemble. It's a good thermal insulator. So that's an example of where I would use a wooden spatula instead of plastic because I, I wouldn't wor burn my hands while using it. And it doesn't conduct electricity. Sometimes that's what you need for certain materials. So, for instance, the popsicle sticks we use to make our bridges are made of uh, hardwood, and specifically from the birch tree. And the characteristics of wood, so hardness, it is very high. Elasticity, good elasticity in the sense that some, some wood is easy, easily flexible. Depends, on, obviously, of the thickness. Resilient, it's good enough uh, when it has enough moisture. 
the ductility very low doesn't stretch easily. You cannot make wires out of wood. A malleability, uh, when heat increases, it will be malleable. And finally, tensile strength, it's excellent. Hardwood has a higher level of strength than softwood. And metals now. Metals are other uh, substances we'll look at. They're made of minerals taken from rocks in the ground. So commonly used metals are iron, magnesium, copper, zinc, etc. We'll use metal because it is a good conductor of heat and electricity. And it is malleable and ductile. You can make wires out of it, such as copper wires. Alloys are materials obtained from mixing a metal with one or more metallic or non-metallic substances. Plastics now are manufactured materials made of molecules called polymers. Most of the polymers come from petroleum or natural gas. Others come from cellulose, which come from plant cell walls. Why do we use plastics? They don't conduct electricity. They can be easily molded into different shapes. They can be resilient, so it means they can resist to wear and tear. And they resist corrosion, is what the example I was saying before, will not rust. And they are recyclable. So you can melt them at high heat, which we call them thermoplastics, and then reshape them whichever shape you like. And finally, they are not expensive either. Typical functions of a component. So we'll look at links. We'll look at guiding controls, rotational, translational, and helical. And you have sealing, so a component that closes or surrounds the object and prevents water or air from leaking out. And lubricating. This component that minimizes friction and allows smooth movement. So we have to apply oil. There is a lot inside cars uh, of an, an engine of a car so that nothing would happen in terms of friction. Let's look at the links that uh, bind two objects together. So every link displays four basic characteristics. Is it a direct link or indirect? So a direct link would be uh, two parts directly held together without a third party. Indirect would be two parts linked together with a third party, such as a screw, a nail, glue, Velcro, that sort of thing. The rigid. The rigid characteristic is a means that the object is not flexible. So when you place them together, such as cap uh, of a pen, that is a rigid link. Flexible, the linking component can be deformed when used and has the ability to return to its initial position. So I can think of a spring, let's say, um, or the suspension in a car. There is like a spring inside the suspension of the car and it will absorb shocks and go back to normal. Uh, removable, the linking parts can be separated without damaging either their surfaces or the linking component. So for example, a screw, you can unscrew it and screw it back and that will not damage the, the two parts together. So let's say, I don't know, um, the chair that you're sitting on has screws. If you remove the parts, you can replace them together, no problem. However, on the other hand, a permanent link, uh, objects will be destroyed if they are taken apart. So if the objects are welded together or glued together um, and you take them apart, they can damage. So, for instance, the bridges we built, if you were to uh, take apart some of these pieces, the pieces of your bridges, they can be damaged because it was all glued. A complete link, so once the two pieces are placed together, they will prevent two parts from moving independently of one another. So once it's set in place, such as the cap of a pen and the pen, once you have them together, installed together, it is a complete link. A partial link allows two parts to move independently from one another. So they're placed together, they're attached, yet they're allowed to move. So for instance, um, a doorknob, there's a piece attached to another piece, but there is a movement of rotation that we're able to do without taking it apart. Um, you have, let's say, a laptop. You can swing the screen back and forth. The pieces are attached together, 
but they're allowing a movement. And that's an example of a partial link. So here are some of the questions you will need uh, to answer the following uh, couple of questions. So when you ask yourself, is it direct or indirect? You ask yourself, do the parts require something else to hold them together? Rigid or flexible? Can the linking components be deformed when used, and will it return to its initial position? Removable or permanent? Can the object be taken apart without causing damage to the object? And complete or partial? Is the movement possible between two parts? So let's answer this first question here. You have the shelf, and it has um, side panels that are attached with glue. They are glued in place here. So question is, is this a direct or indirect link? Meaning, do you have a third party? So it says, do the parts require something else to hold them together? Yes, you need glue. Um, is it a complete or partial link? Remember, once it's set in place, it does not allow movement. So it is a complete link. Is it removable or permanent? Will it get damaged if it's removed? Yes, so it is a permanent. And lastly, is it rigid or flexible? Again, will the two pieces together be flexible or rigid? In this case, rigid. Let's try the other one. We have the light bulb and socket. In here, the links, it is completely, it is directly placed, directly linked. There's no third party. There's no screw or glue or anything like that. It is complete, so meaning once you place it inside, there's no more movement possible. Um, and it's removable, meaning I can take it apart, put it back in without it being damaged, and rigid, meaning once it's placed, that's it, you cannot move it. There is no movement possible. Okay, how about here? Take a few minutes and think about the clothespin. All right, so do the two parts require something else to hold them? Yes, you have that little metal piece here. This is why it's indirect. Um, complete or partial? Is the movement possible between the two parts? Yes, that's why it allows it to move up and down once it's pushed here. Can the object be taken apart without causing damage to the object? Yes, you can remove this piece without causing damage to the other two wooden pieces. So then it's removable. And finally, can the linking components be deformed when used and will it return to its initial position? So here, yes, it can be deformed and it will go back to its original position. That's why it's flexible. Lastly, we look at guiding controls. We have the translational movement. So the guide down here, the, the tracks of the uh, window, allow the movement of back and forth, uh, translational movement. Rotation, you find it in a bicycle or tires of a car. The uh, middle part will allow the movement, the rotational of, the rotational movement of the tire. And lastly, helical, the, uh, this piece that's right here has ridges that allow, uh, the top part to move down. And in rotation and translation at the same time, this is why it's called helical. That's it for this video. Watch part two for speed changes, transmission, and transformation systems.